the director of the MIT Energy Initiative, uh, to give opening remarks uh, for the conference. Bob, you have the floor. Just unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you very much, Ju. Uh, uh, it was a um, very nice introduction to the conference, and, and it's a great conference setup that, that you have. Um, I think for those in academia, you'll be amused as you referred to me as his boss. The concept of faculty members having bosses is a is, is a strange one, of course. Um, but let me add uh, let me add my welcome to Jews um, to, to the conference uh, and to thank the organizing committee for putting together a, a great conference. Um, I, I hope everyone has uh, perused the uh, the conference book and the program. Uh, there are a lot of interesting uh and, and very diverse set of of uh, talks coming up uh, so i'm i'm sh sure i'm looking forward to it as much as i'm sure you are uh, as we go forward I'd, I'd particularly like to to um say that i i'm a big fan of the theme of, of a plus b this idea of bringing together uh, what we can do now with what we need to do uh to prepare uh, for, for the future. As, as the name suggests, um, it, it, it is an all of the above approach. And, and I think to go with that, an all hands on deck approach that, that we surely need if we're going to be successful in, in meeting the, the dual challenge of providing the energy uh, that the world needs for uh, economic growth, uh, population growth, for achieving energy quality, which is an important component of, of economic and opportunity quality uh, around the world, while at the same time going after this major challenge we have of addressing and mitigating uh, climate change. Um, I, I also like this idea simply because it, it resonates with the way we started the Energy Initiative, MITE, uh, at MIT is uh, nearly 15 years ago now. Uh, with our, our research portfolio, at least, uh, uh, organized around uh, a three-pronged approach. Um, and the three prongs uh, were uh, to innovate, to transform, and to integrate. Um, and I think those align quite well with this A plus B approach, as, as you articulated it um, a couple of minutes ago. Um, in, in the innovation uh, category, we think of it as, as how do you make today's energy systems uh, more efficient, more environmentally friendly? Uh, how, how do you scale them up? Uh, those that are lowest carbon or zero carbon, how do you scale them up to help us meet energy to needs, uh, current needs, and, and at the same time reduce, uh, reduce carbon footprints? Uh, so some obvious ones in that category that are well underway. Um, uh, fuel switching, we've seen massive reductions in coal use uh, in a country like the, the US uh, as natural gas has replaced it. Uh, natural gas, of course, has too much, uh, too much carbon in it for long-term use uh, in the energy system as is. Um, so, so we, we need uh, uh, careful attention to reducing methane emissions, leaks in the natural gas uh, system. CCUS enters as we get uh, further along as, as a, uh, an important and, and necessary condition if we want to have any hope at all of getting to uh, two degree and even 1.5 degree uh, targets uh, for climate change, negative emissions technologies in, in particular, uh, taking advantage of, of CCS. Um, you'll see in the program interesting technologies, uh, new ideas in nuclear, how, to, how does nuclear adapt to new modes of use uh, in environments where there are variable renewable resources also uh, generating electricity? Um, how, how can we improve efficiency of energy use in all sectors? Um, how do we couple digital methods uh, for more efficient operations and use? How do we improve the infrastructure uh, we have uh, so we can have more uh, versatile um, opportunities with the energy sources we have um, and so on. You'll hear lots of that uh, dur during the, the next two days. Transformative technologies, um, everything from fusion, which is quite exciting uh, today a after 
70 years of basic research, understanding uh, the fundamental science uh, there. Uh, lots of exciting new approaches to solar. Hydrogen uh, is making a comeback uh, now since the, the um, early 2000s uh, uh, as, a, as a potential way to meet very hard to decarbonize through electricity uh, sectors uh, of, the, uh, of the energy uh, domain. Uh, Ju mentioned uh, circular economy, solar fuels is an interesting opportunity there, taking solar energy and using it uh, to recycle CO2, uh, split water and get it back to, uh, to a fuel that could be used uh, in, in traditional applications. Um, I, I think a, a front and center part of this trio today is integration. Um, I, I think we've been working long and hard on, on the uh, making today's technologies better and new transformative technologies. And as we deploy those, we've gotten to the point where we have run into the challenges of how those work together. Um, it, it, if you haven't thought about it carefully or understood in advance what some of those challenges uh, might be. And, and there we need to take advantage of, of some existing tools, develop new tools um, and deploy those in planning and understanding optimal strategies uh, in different regions around the world. Um, I'd like to give a, a particular nod here to, to a program uh, that has been conceived and, and developed by uh, a researcher at the M MIT Energy Initiative, uh, Emery Gensler, and his team. Uh, the initiative's called, called SESAME. Um, it's a tool. Uh, SESAME stands for the Sustainable Energy Systems Analysis and Modeling Environment. And, and what the tool does is, is allow you to do uh, uh, life cycle analysis in an automated way from anything as simple as an, a, a single pathway, so from a, a single energy source to a final use uh, of the energy, uh, to putting multiple pathways together to get a system, say the energy system in the state of California or the New England energy system, or, or the energy system for an entire country or, or continent. Um, to have this resource available to map out all these different modular systems you could assemble allows you to examine uh, choices you have for achieving uh, carbon emissions reductions at different economic costs. And, and that's going to be particularly important as, as we try to understand how to develop the systems that are right for specific regions uh, around the world. Within the US contrast, for example, California, which has good solar resources, wind resources, but also hydro now, versus Texas, which has good solar and wind, but no hydro uh, or, New, or New England, which has um, good wind resource access to hydro if we can get the, the right transmission, uh, but, but not so good uh, solar resource. Uh, so we need, we need solutions that can be designed and adapted uh, to different regions and analysis tools are, are very important there. I think SESME is a, is a really innovative approach on that side. Uh, we have sessions looking at uh, um, tools like integrated assessment models, uh, which will be very useful in understanding policy implications. Uh, and, and of course, how all of this happens in developing countries as opposed to developed countries uh, like the US or the EU, uh, I, I think is one of the great challenges uh, that, that we face. Uh, so, so I'd like to end my brief opening uh, remarks with uh, a return to a, a topic that, that Ju referred to in his, his remarks, that's uh, COVID-19, um, which is, um, maybe I should call it the elephant that's not in the room, uh, and, and which is why none of us are in the room uh, either. Um, so, so certainly we're, we're it, I, I don't know how to put this, blessed with crises today, right? COVID-19 is one of them, climate change is one of them, uh, racial justice, social justice is another, they, they go on and on, uh, sadly. Uh, COVID-19, I, I think we ought to try to get something out of this crisis. Um, as painful 
uh, and as much suffering as it causes, is causing um, in the US and, and around the world. And, and I think uh, the fact that COVID-19 is having immediate impacts on us as individuals and as society uh, can provide some takeaways uh, that I hope we can carry over to dealing with uh, the climate crisis. Um, and, and those two messages are, are that number one, um, having experienced uh, the impacts of this crisis personally, perhaps we've learned more about the importance, uh, learned it on, on, on a, a gut level, the importance of paying attention to science uh, as we develop processes and methods and policies for addressing a crisis. Um, we've seen varied attempts to deal with COVID-19, certainly within the US, no doubt around the world, uh, in whether you pay attention to science or not. And I think the message is pretty clear there uh, that, that we have to have a, a data-driven approach uh, to these problems. Now, the second is, is message from COVID-19 is, is that what we do as individuals, uh, what we do as small subgroups of the population affect other people, right? We are not isolated uh, in, in, in this world uh, we live in. Uh, certainly that's true in climate change, but it's harder to see, harder to feel, I think, because the impacts are further out in the future. Uh, maybe COVID-19 can help us all to remember uh, that we are not alone, we're not separate uh, individuals in this world, uh, and, and that we, what we do, we have to do with the greater uh, commons in mind. So with that, I will stop, and uh, I thank you all for tuning in and taking part of this, uh, taking part in it, and, and for the contributions that uh, everyone has made. So pl please enjoy the conference. Thank you.